Let's discuss solve problem 2 on asymptotic notations. Here is the problem. Consider the following three claims. Claim number 1 is n plus k whole to the power m is theta of n power m where k and m are constants. Claim number 2 is 2 power n plus 1 is equal to big O of 2 power n. And claim number 3 is 2 power 2n plus 1 is equal to big O of 2 power n. Which of the following claims are correct? These are the options. We need to identify the correct option. How do we identify the correct option? We need to take each claim one at a time and we need to analyze it properly. The result of analysis will tell which of these claims is correct. So now, Let's dive into the solution. Let's take claim number 1 first and let's see whether this claim is correct or not. Claim number 1 is n plus k whole to the power m is theta of n power m. Can we say this claim is correct? Here we have the theta notation and we know theta notation tells the two functions are asymptotically equal. This means n plus k whole to the power m is asymptotically equal to n power m. Can we say this claim is correct? Let's try to identify this. Here we have n plus k whole to the power m. We can rewrite this as n power m plus k power m. Here we have k power m. k power m is the constant function because k and m are constants. What about n power m? n represents input and m is the constant. Therefore, this is the polynomial function. n is not the constant. It is representing the input. But m is the constant. Therefore, this is the polynomial function. This can be n, n square, n power 3, n power 4 and so on. So, n power m is the polynomial function and k power m is the constant function. Out of these two, which one is the dominating term? Clearly, n power m is the dominating term because the growth rate of n power m is greater than the growth rate of k power m. n power m is the polynomial function and the growth rate of the polynomial function is greater than the growth rate of k power m which is the constant function. So clearly n power m in this expression is the dominating term. So the growth rate of this function is decided by n power m. Hence we can say n power m plus k power m is asymptotically equal to n power m. In other words, we can say n power m plus k power m is equal to theta of n power m. And we can say n plus k whole to the power m is theta of n power m. So, claim number 1 is absolutely correct. Now, let's move to claim number 2. Claim number 2 says 2 power n plus 1 is big O of 2 power n. Can we say this claim is correct? Let's find out. Here we have the big O notation and we know the definition of the big O notation. We know according to the definition of big O notation, if fn is big O of gn, then fn must be less than or equal to c times gn for some c greater than 0 and for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So, let us assume that 2 power n plus 1 is fn and 2 power n is gn. If 2 power n plus 1 is big O of 2 power n, then 2 power n plus 1 must be less than or equal to c times 2 power n. This is according to the definition of the big O notation. Can we say this inequality is true? If this inequality is true, then we can say 2 power n plus 1 is big O of 2 power n. This means claim number 2 is also correct. Let's try to find whether this inequality is true or not. Let's simplify this inequality so that it would be easier for us to compare these two sides. Here we have 2 power n plus 1 and here we have c times 2 power n. 2 power n plus 1 can be rewritten as 2 power n times 2. So in the left hand side now we have 2 power n times 2 
and in the right hand side we have c times 2 power n this is the new inequality now we can observe we have 2 power n on both the sides therefore we can remove 2 power n from both the sides and we will be left with c greater than or equal to 2 this is the simplified inequality so obtained now can we say c is greater than or equal to 2 we can assume some c according to the definition of the bigo notation we need to assume some c greater than 0 let's say c is equal to 3 for c equal to 3 this inequality is satisfied we can take any constant greater than 0 we can take c as 2 10 50 we can take any constant but for at least one constant the inequality must be satisfied we can see for c equal to 3 this inequality is true hence we can say 2 power n plus 1 is big o of 2 power n this means 2 power n is asymptotically bigger than 2 power n plus 1 it seems like 2 power n plus 1 is bigger than 2 power n but in reality we can always select some constant and make the right hand side greater than the left hand side this means 2 power n can become greater than 2 power n plus 1 this is the meaning of this equality now we know claim number 2 is also correct so 1 and 2 are both correct it seems like option a is the correct option but it might be possible that option d is the correct option it might be possible that claim number 3 is also correct. So now let's proceed with claim number 3. Claim number 3 says 2 power 2n plus 1 must be equal to big O of 2 power n. We again need to apply the big O definition. Here fn is 2 power 2n plus 1 and gn is 2 power n. So if 2 power 2n plus 1 is big O of 2 power n, then 2 power 2n plus 1 must be less than or equal to c times 2 power n, where c is some constant greater than 0. Now again, let's do the same thing. Let's simplify this inequality for comparison purposes. Let's try to identify whether this inequality is true by simplifying it further. Here we have 2 power 2n plus 1. We can rewrite this as 2 power 2n times 2. So, in the left hand side we have 2 power 2n times 2 and in the right hand side we have c times 2 power n. Now, to further simplify the matter, let's represent 2 power 2n as 2 power n times 2 power n. So, 2 power 2n can be written as 2 power n times 2 power n. In the left hand side now we have 2 power n times 2 power n times 2 and in the right hand side we have c times 2 power n. Now we can observe 2 power n is common in both sides. So we can now cancel 2 power n from both sides. We will be left with 2 power n times 2 less than or equal to c. Now in the left hand side we have 2 power n times 2. This can be rewritten as 2 power n plus 1. So now we have the inequality 2 power n plus 1 less than or equal to c. Can we say this inequality is correct? Here we can observe in the left hand side we have 2 power n plus 1 and in the right hand side we have c. Can we say this inequality is true for some constant c greater than 0 and for all n greater than or equal to some n naught where n naught is also some constant? No matter what n naught we select, 2 power n plus 1 will surpass some constant at some point in time. If let's say c is 1000, then for n equal to 4, we will have 2 power 5 here. 2 power 5 is less than 1000. But what if we take n as 9 here? We will get 2 power 10 and 2 power 10 is 1024. 1024 is greater than 1000. So, it does not matter what constant we take here. 2 power n plus 1 will eventually surpass the constant. It will become greater than the constant. 
it is not the case that there exists some constant which is greater than 2 power n plus 1 for all n greater than or equal to n naught. This inequality must be true for every possible n greater than or equal to n naught. So, this inequality is false. So, clearly, 2 power 2n plus 1 is not big O of 2 power n. This claim is false. So, it is clear that option A is the correct option. So, with this, I hope it is clear how to solve these type of problems. Okay, friends, we are done with this topic and hence we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.